What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be working on our Ultimate Proxmox server again, you know, the Zemo board one that we were working on last week. Today we're going to be adding ZFS to it, so we're going to be making a ZFS pool and we're going to be adding that to our Proxmox server so we could use that as usable storage to make VMs and anything else we might want. But if you remember the Zemo board only has two SATA ports, but it does have that PCI track. So there is this expansion card that is right for the PCI track. This is from Zemo board, and it can use an M.2 NVMe drive and an M.2 SATA drive. Now, I am kind of let down that it's using a SATA drive because I'm missing out on speeds. I have two small hard drives that can fit on this board that's a simple add on into the PCI track. Uh, everything's hanging off, but it's just going to, you know, sit right in and we have more hard drive space and we're gonna be able to make our ZFS pool. So we're gonna work on that today. I'm gonna to have links to all this in below. I'll have links to the hard drives. I'll have links to the PCI board. I'll have the links to the Zoom board and everything else you might need to know. But let's get right into this and let's get started. So like I was saying on that PCI card, it is one slot M.2 NVMe and one slot is for SATA SSD. So because it is SATA SSD, you do need to run a SATA cable from the PCI board into the Zemo board. So there is two SATA ports, so it works, but you do miss that on any further expandability because now you're using it for that. Your setup might be different because you might not be using the other SATA port to run the OS. You might have installed it on the Zemo board or maybe you're using it off the PCI card. I don't know what your setup might be, but for me currently I have all my SATA ports full and that's what it is. But I just set it up, I just put the card in, the hard drives are coming up, so the Proxmox should be coming up, so I'm going to go take a look and we're going to get started on making the ZFS pool. Before we start, you might wonder what the benefits of, of ZFS are, and we'll read through this in a second, but we do have other options. We do have LVM, LVVM, Thin, and um, you can make other disk types on Proxmox, but we're going to read through the advantages. So pretty much with the virtual environment GUI and the CLI, they're trying to make it easier on the CLI, but it is pretty simple to make a ZFS pool. It's reliable, it's not a RAID, but it does replicate. So they do have available RAIDs, but the thing to remember is ZFS isn't single-handedly a RAID. Um, it helps you compress data, protects against corruption, because now you're having multiple disks to be using. You can use it for cache, it has self-healing abilities, it's gonna do integrity checks, and I mean, you can read through, I'll have this whole link so you can read through the whole um, setup on it. You can take a look and you can read through this or you can do some research on your own, but. I use ZFS in the past, it's pretty nice because you do get multiple disks, so you have, you have the chance in case one disk fails, or there's, you know, bits that get corrupted, or however it might be, you have some chance that it's going to be able to fix itself, and you're not going to lose all your data. So, that's enough of that, let's get right started into making the pool. So, when you go into your Proxmox host, it's going to, you know, look like this, and we're going to come over to pick our actual server node, and you'll probably be on, like, the summary page, or the search page. So you can just take a look and you can see everything's good. We can click on disks if we want and we can see that our two hard drives have come up. We have NVMe 01 and SDA. They're both 512 gig silicon power drives. So it's good to see that they both did come up and they're both pass on smart. And you can expand anything else if you want but they're both 0% and we're all set from here. So now we can go and make the ZFS pool. So we can come down here and click ZFS. And here we're going to create ZFS and then we're going to come in here and we're going to select the two drives we want to use and we're going to name it we're going to call it um, we'll just call it Z pool because it is a ZFS pool so after we name it we're going to come over to this side and we can select our raid level our compression and that uh, the a shift but for if you're wondering what the rate the different raid levels are we can come over to this page Again, the same one we're looking at, and it's going to break down the different RAID levels. So we have RAID 0, which is just striping. To combine them to make one single drive, we use RAID 1, which is going to mirror. So it's going to write to both disks, and it's going to use at least two disks so it replicates. So we could have copies across both disks, so in case one fails, we're good. If we get any higher, we're going to start needing more than two disks. So like a RAID 10 needs four disks, a RAID Z1 needs three. So we're not going to look at these. I think we're going to do a RAID 1 just for the fact that we have redundancy in case anything happens. I do have two 500 gigabyte drives, so I have a good amount of space, so we're just going to do that. So we're going to do a mirror, and then we're going to click Create. So now it's going to run through the prompts, and it's going to make the pool. Like you see over here, it says it's done. And now I have my pool. So I can look at the details, and it looks like it's all good to me. 
So after we make our pool, we come back over to discs. We'll expand that again. You can see now it has updated over here. And our NVMe drive and our SATA drive are now partitioned as ZFS pools. So we can see that under the usage. And if we come over to ZFS, we actually see our pools over here. And we can see that we have our size of 511 gigs and it is not fragmented and it's healthy. So it's always a plus. If we click our details, we can come in here and we can see again, there's all the drives and everything's all in line. There's no read errors, there's no write errors, no checksum errors. And of course, there'll be a message if it does start logging errors. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I, I watched a video on Craft Compute about this maybe a month or so ago. He, he did a really good video breaking down the errors and what happens if a drive fails in a pool. I'll put a link to that below because it will be good to know in case you ever have an issue. But single digit errors are okay. It's when you start getting to like 20, 30, 40 errors, that's when you really want that's when you really want to start worrying that there's some major issues going on and you might want to look to start replacing your disk. But if you have like five read errors, it's probably not the end of the world. But if you start getting to like 25 errors, that's when you really have an issue. So now that we do have the pool made up, we could use it for a virtual machine. So if we did want to come in to create VM real quick, I'll just you know put something in to fill it and then we'll just, just show you. We can come over here, we'll click through. And under disks now, we can come over here and we can select our Z pool. So remember that is our ZFS pool that we just made and you can see I have all the available room for it and I can make a machine with it so it is usable we're all set with that. So that was how we set up ZFS on Proxmox it is super simple and it is really helpful if you have the space and the availability to use the hardware. Um, it's just going to give you the extra redundancy especially if you use like a RAID 1 or if you can use any higher RAIDs if you have like a HBA on your server or anything else you have you know availability to add for more SSDs or hard drives or whatever you might want to be using on your server. Of course, by using a RAID, it's going to help you protect your data in case there's a drive failure instead of using like striping where, you know, striping is cool because you get more disk space, but if something fails, you lose everything. Like on my main server, I don't think I have any redundancy. So if one of my drives fails, I probably lose everything. So that's why the ZFS pool with RAID 1 is really nice or any of the other RAIDs. One thing to keep in mind is that Proxmox does say that ZFS uses a lot of memory. So we're going to see how it works on this machine. I do have 8 gigs of memory on the Zima board, but I don't know. It might strain it too much and we might need to change it up. But uh, Proxmox does recommend that you have at least 8 gigs of memory to run ZFS on your machine because it is memory heavy. So we'll see how this works out. But that's how you have make a ZFS pool. Now it's usable for all your other VMs or whatever you might want to use it for. And you can start using it freely. So. I hope you guys like this video. It's you know just as simple how to make a ZFS pool, but it is really helpful to know because it's a you know a good add-on to use in Proxmox. Hope you guys like this video. I know it's really simple, but it's important to know how to make a ZFS pool and understand the differences in the RAID levels and everything else. So that's how you get it all set up. I have a Discord, I have a Twitter, I'll put links to both of them below. You can follow me on Twitter, you can reach out to me in Discord. I had a couple people this week that ran into some issues with some of the projects that I made videos about, and I was able to either help them out or, you know, point out some of the issues they were having. So join up the Discord, it's a really good way to join the community, and we are able to chat and just, you know, help each other with our projects. I will put links to all the hardware below, I'll put the links to Zima board, and then I will also have links to the hard drives I use. So these are silicon power drives. So I will have Amazon links to those below and anything else that I've been using. So if you want to get the same gear as me, you can. I'll have the links for that. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I make post videos. Usually I drop videos on Fridays, but maybe you won't see it in your box. So make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when I post my videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.